Ooh, okay. I don't know a better person. I don't know a better person. Why is it making you cry? <sighs> Shoot, wasn't gonna cry here. Um, tissue please, I now need tissue. She helps people, I do the same thing. I just do it on the ground. And uh, you've been with Oprah for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think that relationships are, are, are difficult. Reason why is because they gathered so much evidence was supposedly they gathered so many videos and laptops and also electronic devices. Friend in your head, Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, best friend forever. <laughs> yes, yeah. her, her man, Stedman Graham, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, wrote a book called Identity Leadership. Okay. And in the book, he reveals some of his secrets about the 30-year relationship he's had with Oprah. Oh. oh, this is the funniest thing, guys. You all know Stedman is really big. You mentioned, you know, that you've been with Oprah for a long time now. I met a long time ago. She says this sometime. Let me tell you something, girl. The tea is hot and the streets are talking. Oprah Winfrey, the media mogul, and her partner Stemmen are undergoing some intense conflict. Graham, can you believe that these two have been together for decades while keeping everything under wraps? For those of you who have been living under a rock, everything is suddenly public knowledge. Stick around because I'm going to spill all the tea on this celebrity scandal that has everyone talking. Oprah is the billionaire boss lady who had us all glued to our TVs for years and Stemmen has been her ride or die since forever. But honey, something's brewing in paradise and it ain't pretty now. I know you're dying to know what went down and trust me, it's juicier than you think. We're talking about a rare public showdown between these two private lovebirds. Yeah, best friend forever. <laughs> yes. yeah. her, her man, Stedman Graham, uh -huh. uh, wrote a book called Identity Leadership. Okay. And in the book, he reveals some of his secrets about the 30-year relationship he's had with Oprah. Oh, right. And in Hollywood, like I mean, a 30-year relationship, that's like a couple of lifetimes. <laughs> They're not married. Years. Especially with someone as powerful as Oprah. Yes. So uh, he goes on to say, the thing about our relationship is I want the best for her. So I'm dedicated to her happiness. So that's great for her, and I want her to be the best she can possibly be, and she's done a pretty good job of doing it. Do you hear that, Frank? You hear that? That's how you're supposed to t talk to a significant yeah. other or a spouse. You want the, what's best for yes, her. You want her to be happy. That is wonderful, uh -huh. Stedman, but this yes. is so passive aggressive because then he goes on to say this. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. For me, I've been able to find my own happiness. Like, nobody's helping him find his happiness. He's helping Oprah find all hers. He's finding his own You're happiness. You're reading into yeah. that. Oh, no, no, no. He goes on, he, go, he goes on, he goes on. <laughs> For me, I've been able to find my own happiness and develop my own skills, my own talents, oh. my own abilities, and I'm satisfied with that. So the combination when you have a good partner that's able to self-actualize their potential and you're able to self-actualize yours, one and one equals about six. Oh! <laughs> The only thing you don't see there are the tears on this other paper. <laughs> yes. It sad. sounds like Oprah's absence made him stronger. Or maybe to make him happy, to make no. him happy, she gets home from her powerful day and, and looks at yep. him and goes, you get a BJ, you oh, get right. a BJ. Okay, everything let us examine the specifics of what Stedman stated that SC, this Stedman is at some expensive event, probably thinking no one is really paying attention to him, but oh my goodness was he wrong. Oprah and everyone else are in a tizzy image of him. He's talking away when he starts talking about Oprah's work ethic. We all know that Oprah is building an empire on her hustle, but Stemmen is saying that she needs to slow down and stop working so hard. Wait, it gets worse, he continued, saying that Oprah is always chasing the next big thing, but occasionally I wonder if she's running away from something. Now what does that mean? Is he trying to say that Oprah has some skeletons in her closet? Just when you thought he couldn't possibly get any more in his mouth, Stemmen drops this bomb? Oh no, he didn't really suggest that Oprah, the queen of self-help and living your best life. It's a management issue. You gotta be able to manage that process. To be able to, I mean, you can imagine if you are a, a brand in sports and we know the brands, you reach people, people know your name all over the world. Yeah. You walk into a place, they give you everything. You know, you got big contracts, all of that. If you were able to source content and information and apply your brand to building communities, to helping other people empower themselves, to helping your family, leveraging your, 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 your brand awareness and your name for good, okay? And then to kind of organize a legacy while you're, while you're playing sports, kind of organize what you should be doing in the future, positioning yourself. You imagine the power of that as opposed to thinking and walking around just playing ball and 
you know, and not thinking about anything and just kind of having fun. Right. But it's a time to really, you only have a short amount of time. You don't have a lot of time. So to take those few years that you have, in some case basketball, you might have 10 years or whatever the case may be. And there's some exceptions like Tom Brady, of course, who's, who's you know, has more than 10, 25 years or whatever the case may be. But the ability to be able to leverage that, and I think he's done it very well, you know, um, uh, to be able to leverage that into an existing world and make it work for you and and your external clan, you know, man to empower other people. I just think, and I think LeBron's done a pretty, looks like he's done a pretty good job of doing that, you know, where he does life after basketball, you know, and he's helping in the community. And I'm sure there's a lot of other athletes that do that. I mean, when you put it like that, of, of course, it's an incredibly powerful tool. Like you said, I mean, that makes perfect sense. It's seems more of like just avoiding the pitfalls of it like you said well it's knowing how it how it can empower you and your ideas and where you're going and who you want to become and not be stuck in just thinking that you're all of that you know? right and you're not you know because once the once you stop playing ball really not that many people care right so you got to make for it for make it work for you, and that's what social media should be doing for everybody. Is making it work for you, as opposed to again the reverse. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would Stemmen, who has supported Oprah for decades, suddenly start talking about their personal problems in public? Some are wondering if there is trouble in paradise that we are unaware of, while others are suggesting that perhaps Stemmen is feeling neglected because, let's face it, he is tired of being Oprah's sidekick. Others are speculating that perhaps Stemmen is trying to get Oprah to slow down once she gets going, but the real question is what if Stemmen is hinting at something deeper? After all, when a man starts talking about his woman needing to spend more time at home, it usually indicates that there is more to the story than meets the eye. So uh, you, you also wrote, um, teens can make it happen, nine steps to success. How does the I concept of identity differ for this younger demographic? Well, that's a great question. Uh, again, I go back to how we learn. Uh, I'm trying to get a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old young person to understand they have 80 years left. Um, and if they could take those 80 years and learn how to learn, learn how to apply everything to what they love and what they're passionate about, what's meaningful in their life, that they really have an opportunity to improve. I mean, you're going to really be successful if you're a better person today than you were yesterday. You just keep growing and you're learning and you're a lifelong learner and you're a reader. You keep reading all the time and you're focusing on setting goals and you understand the process of success and how it works and you're focusing on what you love. You and you tie that to business and you tie that to social media you tie that to all those things that will empower you based on what's possible for you and you have access to a global marketplace and everything you learn from now on you can begin to organize it through a cognitive ability to be able to download content that's relevant to your talents to your skills and to, to your passion if i can get you to understand that at 10 or 11 um man that's a pretty good uh process for building and designing your own future yeah, I mean, changing the trajectory of someone's life at that age, I mean, you, you can't put a price on that. I mean, it's like you said, it changes them forever and can benefit them greatly. Yeah, and the process works, especially for, you know, some athletes who are young. You know, they start at, what, six, five, and four, and they learn the process of how it works. Yeah. And by the time they get 11 or 12, they're like killing them. Yeah. And that's when you, and so, so it's the same process for me as trying to get young people to understand their, their empowerment at an early age. So similar question to sports, you know, these young people now, I mean, I couldn't imagine kind of growing up with social media, um, the way it is now back when I was a kid or a teen, um, kind of similar question that we did for the athletes. How, how do these young people deal with social media when they can't necessarily like start a business or use it for work well I, I think they have to uh, it's tough the very difficult thing when you're dealing with social media and 
you don't know what it, what it does or the purpose of it or how it affects you and the algorithms are set up and designed to hook you you know and all of that so i think you just have to well hopefully you have good parents who understand you know how to monitor some of that but again it's it, it is a valuable tool because it has so much information again i go back to not everybody's going to get this but making sure you understand who you are so you can apply the information to your development and create something that that you can control as opposed to it controlling you and so that that's an awareness process you know that's that's raising people's consciousness about that which we're trying to do in, in schools and 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 then students we do i mean we do we have a program in mississippi that we we're working on and man those the young people there they're in stem they're in stem programs and they're smart and boy to be able to eliminate all the labels that they have to deal with i mean through this process of identity and understanding who you are it's just really so rewarding to see them the light bulb go off and not be defined by their parents and not be defined by their circumstances which can be very difficult for them sometimes yeah and that i mean that kind of answers the second question as well about you know how do you educate parents and educators in order to help children you know think more about identity first well you have to have curriculum and uh, and so you have to have the books and the content the materials and everything else and then it's, we set it up as a train the trainer program and let's not forget that oprah and stemmen have been together for a very long time without getting married could it be that stemmen is finally tired of their unconventional arrangement is he pushing for more commitment or perhaps even marriage Whatever his reasons, one thing is for sure Stemmen just kicked up a lot of trouble because Oprah isn't going to let this go. She's built her entire brand on being strong, independent, and in control of her own narrative so you can bet she won't allow Stemmen or anyone else try to shame her for her success or dictate how she should live. Now, here's the million dollar question, how is Oprah going to respond to all of this? Will she ignore it like it's nothing and let Stemmen handle it behind closed doors? Or will we see the Queen of Talk confront him in public? Okay, for my success, I have to have process and structure. Mm -hmm. I have to force myself yeah. to do that. You also have to live in the moment. So everybody watching this wants Stedman to tell us about his Oprah. Does she snore? You're the only one that knows the answer <laughs> well, to that question. That's exactly not what I was thinking, I, you know, but that's a good... This yeah, is, I mean, does she snore, Stedman? Let me just tell you. No, you they know come from Kosciuszko, that... Mississippi. That's true. Yeah. You know, That's been true. abused as a child, right. a black woman right. who's now a billionaire, right. self-made, okay, in this country that is socially constructed not to exactly celebrate your success, okay, that's a milestone. And to be a woman on top of that. Right. And so, I mean, this is a person who's been number one for 25 years. Every book that she put on the show has gone to bestseller. She has her own network. She's from Kazi Esco, Mississippi. Yeah. And it was not an easy thing. And it's not an easy years. thing. So, and, and you talk about someone who has talent, skills, and process, and smart. She's been able to put that together what to, is to get beyond the labels yeah. based on a socially constructed process that tries to keep her down and has kept people down year after year after year after year. And, and, and own isn't where it wants to be right now, but I'm not counting her out, and I know neither are you. No, it's a process. Yeah. You can't just come in and create an organization or build a company right. in, in six months. That's right. You've got to put your voice in it. You've got to work on shows. You, so she'll be fine. As Great you to have say, you here. As you put in here, progress begins one step at a time. One step at a time. So we'll take the first step this morning. Seven first grand. step is understand who you, you are. are. Girl, at the time when Oprah heard about Steidman's remarks, she was not amused. Rumor has it that she was in her office when her secretary, dressed like a ghost, ran in. Can you picture being the one to inform Oprah Winfrey that her man is out here talking shadily about her chile? Although Oprah is no fool and has built an empire on her ability to handle difficult situations, this hit different her partner of decades spilling their business in public left Oprah shaken, and she sat there for a minute taking it all in. However, you know that our girl wasn't about to let this slide. Word on the street is Oprah wasted no time in getting in touch with her team, canceling all of her scheduled appointments and telling them to get Stemmen on the phone. Now image being Stemmen and receiving that call, knowing that you have the queen of all media coming after you. This is where things get interesting. Oprah instructed him to meet her at their Chicago penthouse in person rather than hiding behind a phone call or text message. She's too intelligent for that, instead of just blowing off at Stemmen over the phone. 
When Oprah faced him and she desired to address him directly. To be able to source uh, the resources of the world through having a vision bigger than your circumstances, okay? To be able to plan it out, work, work every single day. You gotta be a hard worker, mm. okay? To have a strong value system, right? And to be able to uh, focus on those barriers of, of success that hold you back, building a team, uh, being able to, again, source content by organizing information, you become a reader and creating a lifestyle around that. So again, I go back to the power versus the powerless. So how are you going to be empowered uh, so that you, um, you know, out distance the 99% of the people who, where are they going? They're not going anywhere. They're stuck. So, you know, it's really about deprogramming yourself and realize, again, I go back to it's not how the world defines you, it's about how you define yourself and being able to work on yourself as a way to uh, establish a privilege, a privileged life. So last social media question, I promise, but mm -hmm. I thought this was, you know, very applicable to the book of, you know, you mentioned labels are distorting our view of the world and our place in it. And in today's digital age with the prominence of social media, kind of how can we work to move beyond these imposed labels and cultivate authentic self-representation? I don't know how you do it unless you have an identity. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how you do it unless you're focusing on what you're doing, which is to find out who you are, working on that every day, right? Because it, it takes a while and figure out what you do well and to do it over and over and over to where you become an expert in your field so that you can out distance everybody else who are doing what? What are they doing? They're, you know, they're not going anywhere for the most part because they're stuck in a mindset. And so again, when you start to t change the learning system around where everything becomes relevant to build you building value, then you're, you're not stuck in that box. You know, you're able to not be defined by the labels or how other people see you, but the only thing that's important, because I use this in my own life, of being not being defined by labels and be, be, people try to put me in, in a box and, you know, especially me and, you know, in regards to my relationship. And so what I try to do is not worry about how other people define me, but how I define myself, and that's what's important. Imagine Oprah waiting for Stemmen to arrive in that penthouse. The tension in that room must have been greater than that of a bowl of cold grits. When Stemmen arrived, we don't know exactly what happened, but people close to Oprah claimed she didn't hold back. She reportedly asked, Who do you think you are? and added, Talking about me like that in public after all these years you should know better, but Oprah didn't stop there. No, she took it a step further. In a move that shocked everyone, Oprah chose to confront Stemmen in private. My profession has been based on sincerity and genuineness. I have had ups and downs in my relationship, just like any other marriage, but what happened recently crossed the line, and I won't stand for anyone, not even my partner, trying to tell me how to live my life or operate my business," Oprah stated on air. So speaking of relationships, how do your theories on identity and success apply to couples in relationships where, you know, you can feel comfortable working on your own identity and your own self, but also being a part of a team? That, and that's beautiful. I mean, you, I mean, you said it. So to be able to be comfortable with yourself, be happy with what you do, doesn't have anything to do with what somebody else is doing. So you're not jealous, you're not angry, you're not upset because somebody is, you know, more successful than you or whatever the case may be because you're happy with yourself. That's what we're talking about. That makes perfect sense. I mean, I think we can all relate to that, right? I mean, I, it's like no matter where you are or who you're with, there's always some sort of, you know, question of, is that person being their authentic self? And do I want to be in this relationship? And, and, and strength being, you know, I mean, only the strong survive, you know, that's, that's, I always talk about that in my speeches, but um, you're strong when you're strong. You're not strong because you want to make yourself be strong. You're strong when you do the work. You're strong when you have a vision that you can apply to your life every day. You're strong when you're focusing on what you do well. You're strong when you focus on love. You're strong when you are 
uh, when you put the 24 hours of work in and when you're, you're strong, when you organize your life, you're strong when you uh, are able to take information and make it relevant to your development. You're strong when you work on your weaknesses. That's when you're strong. You're not strong because you just want to be strong or just because you think you should be stronger than the other person. So you got to earn the right for that. Then have you, have there been examples of and have you used kind of your own principles of I- identity with? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. There's no way I could do it or deal with some of the issues I've had to deal with throughout my life without following the nine step success process. Okay, I follow it. I created it for myself. Um, and what I do is I don't worry about how the world defines me or how other people define me. I work on me. Yeah. I develop me so that I, the more I have, the more I can give. I can contribute more because I'm working on me and building value in my own life. So it's the value you want to build in your own life, not waiting for somebody to give you that or or having somebody else determine your value. Create your own, build your own opportunities, uh, source your own talents, find out what you do well and work on it and, and search for it. And then what will happen, you'll develop this process for continuous improvement. And you'll improve and you'll grow and you'll develop and you'll build and you're pretty much, you're, you're not your circumstances, you are your possibilities because of the work that you put in. It's the work that you do when you work on yourself. So we're just trying to change this around so that you begin to understand the importance of you and how you can begin to build whatever you want based on the work. Is that really true? Oprah, the queen of privacy when it comes to her personal life, is putting it all out there in that way. It's as though she was saying, let's play this game in public, Stemmen. This move by Oprah is huge. We're talking about a woman who has kept her relationship under wraps for decades. By addressing this head on, Oprah is sending a clear message that she isn't about to let anyone, not even Stemmen, try to shame her for her success or dictate how she should live. And let me tell you, the response has been wild with people praising Oprah standing her ground and using hashtags like Oprah Strong and Hash. Oprah has been the talk of the town and other celebrities have joined in to support her and criticize Stedman for his remarks. And then what do you think is the most like understood aspect of the identity teachings? Misunderstood? Yeah. That, that, that it's easy. Right. It's an easy process to figure out who you are because it's, because it's ongoing. It never ends. It always, you always have to improve it. You always have to, you know, you go one level, another level, another level, another level in that process. So it's not, it's not me just saying it. When I just say it, find out what you love. You got to find out what you don't love. You got to find out what you don't want to do. You got to, you know, focus on it. You got to actually do it. You might have to work in it. You know, you have to break the mold. You have to go back to that. You know, you spend years and years and sometimes in some cases you may never find it because you have nobody to actually show you how to actually do it, which is why I do this work is to show people the process for how it's done. So they be they at least can start, you know, it may take you 15 years to get to the point where you're really happy about the work that you're doing. Right. You know, it would take you a long time because you got to, I mean, you know, look at the work that you do. You got to break this stuff down. This stuff is not easy. Nothing easy about that. You got to show up every day. You got to have a routine. You got to go to meetings. You got to be able to, you know, be creative. You got to have a team to do that. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you don't have the wherewithal to have all of that. So you got to build up to that. You got to work on the job you might hate. I mean, there's a lot of different pieces, and now you got to deal with social media. You got to deal with all the external world. You got to deal with, you know, work-life balance. You got to deal with family. You got to deal with all of that, and you got to be able to balance all. Of that. And because identity is such a personal, introspective journey, how do you see it functioning in the context of societal changes and society as a whole? It's it's a lonely place. Because, you know, you got 99% of the people who pretty much don't have one. And, uh, or they, they don't really understand the value. They haven't started working on one, I should say. And, uh, and so you're like in the minority. You're like a, you know, outside force. And, 
And uh, it's lonely at the top, you know, when you're, you know, organizing yourself around people who are thinkers, who are doers, who want to make it happen, who are independent in their development and all of that. So it's not, not a crowded feel for the most part. So when you begin to produce and organize your own thoughts and you're, you know, folks are out there playing softball and hanging out and hanging out at the beach and you're where are you, you're working. Yeah. And when are you working? Will Melman, you're working 24 7 every day. Definitely. And you're thinking about it all the time, right? Yeah. And so that, that's, that, you know, you got to give up a lot. Sometimes you got to give up your friends and, you know, folks and, and all of that. But it's worthwhile because you control your own destiny. You know, you can create your own opportunities. Yeah. And then it, like you said, it creates that feeling of empowerment and confidence and fulfillment. So let's say, you know, maybe you miss that dinner with the folks, but you go the next time and you have more to talk about and you're excited and you show up more positive because you're, you know, you were working on something you left. Right. There you go. That's it. That's, that's the freedom everybody wants. And everybody, you know, I mean, that's why people are working at, they want to work at home. Because when they got a taste of working at home, oh, this is what it's like. I can work at home, I can go outside, I can take a break, I can, you know, do some of the things I want. And they don't want to go back in the office. Right. You know? So that's the freedom we're talking about, you know, is that we have the ability to be able to decide our own schedule and do some of the things we want to do when we want to do them. And that's the freedom that you get. Now, you're, you're going to work at it. You're going to work for that. Because you got to eat what you kill. Right. And so that's a whole nother ball game. So you mentioned, you know, that you've been with Oprah for a long time now. Yeah. When did you guys first meet? Wow. We met a long time ago. She just says this sometime, a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, we met at a charity. I knew her two years before we actually started going out. And we met over this gentleman's house named Mac. Um, Max Robinson, who was an anchor uh, back in the day, and uh, and so um, you know we've been together for a long time. It's been great. I mean, I'm so lucky and very fortunate to have a great partner. Uh, I mean, it's not been easy, uh, which the relationships aren't always easy, uh, but it's been. I mean, I'm so. F- grateful and thankful that I have somebody who is just a dynamic and wonderful person and who's extraordinary. I mean, that's amazing. That's what we all, you know, wish for and hope for, for sure, is finding that, that life partner. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. And she is, I don't even, I mean, I look at what she's done and who she is and just, I can't even believe, you know, what she's done and and it just oh extraordinary to watch uh, larger than life right it's incredible incredible mind beautiful woman I mean just you know nice to everybody you know humble 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 you know humility that kind of thing so just really 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 strong all the way around yeah it's incredible so I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about your writing process as yeah. an aspiring writer. Um, you know, do you spend a lot of time on the outline phase? Do you like to just jump into it? What's your writing process? Well, my writing process is I come up with ideas and I write a lot. Um, and then I, I may come up with an idea. And what I try to do is solve problems through solutions, of course, and through my writing I'm kind of in the self-help industry. Uh, um, I'm now in the identity industry. So, you know, I do a lot of writing around that and research around that. And so, and then I have someone help me. I can't do all of the writing myself. And so that works out really well. Um, So, and then you want to build a team and now have instructional designers who help and all of that. But basically I drive it for the most part and drive the content and all of that yeah that's amazing yeah. it's um you know having so many books out and and doing it for so long i mean it's obviously impressive is an understatement but um 
you know, I, it's hard writing a book. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing easy about writing the book. So it takes a team of people, and I'm fortunate to have a great agent, and you know, I've had uh, I mean, great publishers, you know, so and and a team of folks who help. And so again, it's a process. I I can't even believe that I'm still in the game. You know, still oh, yeah. writing and still speaking, and we just kind of really are just starting. Um, and and the identity work after 30 years of working to try to build this thing. You know, we're just starting to build these systems where we can deliver this content pretty much anywhere in the world. And now we have the internet. You know, which is a blessing. So I, I I'm so. Fortunate. Let me tell you something, girl. There is an Oprah and Stedman drama. People in the streets, animated like beehives, are discussing whether or not Oprah and Stemmons' public spat marks the beginning of the end for their lovebirds. It's unbelievable that after all these years they could actually fall out. As we all know, Oprah and Stemmons have always kept their relationship under wraps, but this time feels different. It's as though someone has pulled back the curtain on their well-polished relationship, and it's not pretty. Word on the street is that Oprah's inner circle is shaken if Gail is worried, it's serious. And get this, I've heard through the grapevine that some of Oprah's other famous friends are taking sides. It seems that Tyler Perry is all Oprah. While some claim that Stemmon may have a point regarding how much she works, this isn't only what celebrities are. Saying, ordinary people are contributing as well social media is exploding with people sharing their experiences. Some people are complimenting Oprah for not backing down, while others are suggesting that she might slow down a little. It seems like everyone has acquired a PA all of a sudden. A D-A-D-D-D-D-E-E-E-E-E and Oprah's life choices. Now this is where things get interesting. According to sources close to the couple, this isn't the first time they've argued. Apparently Stemmon has been feeling neglected for a while. However, can you blame Oprah for wanting to build her empire? She's changing lives while Stemmon is whining about not being home enough. Let's be honest for a moment. These two have been together for over 30 years longer than some of you have been alive and they have weathered storms before and always emerged stronger. Recall all. The rumors about Oprah and Gail or the occasions when people have wondered why they never got married. Oprah and Stemmon shut down all of that, so what makes this time different? Well, to start, it's really public we're not talking about some gossipy rumors here Stemmon is speaking up at an event and Oprah is clapping back on her own network. It seems like they've taken their personal drama and exposed it to the world, but as they say, once something is public, it's public. Now Oprah and Stemmon must figure out how to continue while everyone is watching it's like they're trying to patch up their relationship while standing in the middle of Times Square with the spotlight on them. But here's the thing, whatever transpires, one thing is certain, this isn't going to be the same Oprah and Stemmon that we're used to seeing that perfect private couple image. Sometimes it takes a big blow up to clear the air. You know, maybe now that everything's out in the open they can really talk about what's been bothering them. Or maybe, and this is just throwing this out there, maybe this is the beginning of the inn. Could we be witnessing the slow unraveling of one of Hollywood's most enduring couples? Stranger things have happened. I love these workshops because we can go deeper and dive deeper in the content. It's more interactive. It's probably about two hours, three hours, you know, we can do that, a full program pretty much. And they, people really love that. They get a lot out of that. Yeah, it sounds amazing, you know, reaching a lot of people. And it seems it would be more, more impactful or just as impactful as like, you know them reading a book but seeing seeing you live and and um really kind of feeling the energy because i i, I saw um eckhart and deepak at usc and it was like a life-changing experience and i guess it is a little different because you kind of the book you get more information but from the speaking you get it's like more impactful if that yeah, makes you, sense there's a connection there yeah so i love to speak and then i do a book signing and we have the books and now we're building the courses out so it's, it's a it's a kind of a um building an ecosystem around the work and so it's it's very very exciting i mean i love the work you know i'm passionate about the work and so it makes it and now again we have such a great opportunity um with the internet and all of that to be able to deliver content anywhere in the world so it's it's a beautiful process and the only reason i i brought up the corporate stuff is i i think it's so interesting that you've created a system that similarly can help you know younger kids to the you know most powerful corporate ceo but it's a very similar system that just applies broadly to all humans like as something that's so core to our development you have to know who you are at all levels and the younger you know 
the more opportunities you'll have for yourself. So yeah. I, again, um, what we try to do is get people to raise their consciousness about what's possible for it, possible for them. And we, we want them to perform at the highest possible level. So how do you become really great at what you do? How do you become good at what you do? How do you perform all the time in every part of your life? You know, which is important for managers and CEOs and 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 teams and employees because you got to be today a self-starter and a self-directed learner. You know, people don't have time to watch you. So what we try to do is get people in, to be engaged in their own life and their own development and be present where they are so that they have the ability to be able to create a great organization because they're great yeah. and they're good. That's powerful. What, what's next for you? What are you working on coming up? Well, what's next for me is to, uh, I mean, I've been in development for all of these years building this. What's next for me to be able to actually do this work and be more in the world um and i've been back and forth a little bit but um we're kind of developing um a technology team around you know the work we're developing teams of people around production and you know now we have a worldwide market of different cultures all of that so to be able to um, deliver, you know, the, the 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 content is what's next, and we keep building that and building that and building that, and so that feels really good right now to be able to be in that position to do it. Still a lot of work, but at least we kind of have the roadmap for where we're going. That's what's exciting. Well, man, I'm looking forward to all of it. I appreciate your support and appreciate you having me. And, and man, you're doing a great job and you look fantastic. And, uh, you know, congratulations on the work that you do. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, Seven. It's a huge honor. My pleasure. For all the power couples out there, this Oprah Stemmen drama is serving up some scorching hot lessons. We've seen it all stem and running his mouth. With Oprah giving a boss-like response and their entire relationship on display for the world to see, People are left wondering how any famous couple manages to stay together in the face of so many onlookers.